You'll notice that many of the exercises in this book, indeed much of the advice in this book, encourages you to think inwardly, to examine your own thoughts and remember your feelings when you've been public speaking and it hasn't been going so well for you and also when it has because it can be really helpful to get back into the mindset of yourself on the stage as a public speaker observing your thoughts and then we can start to understand your thoughts. This is the beginning of our journey to helping you to become the great public speaker that you truly are. In this next exercise I'm going to help you to learn how to observe your thoughts and how to view them almost from the outside dispassionately and start to ask yourself some questions about your thoughts. Are you judging yourself too harshly? I bet you are. Have you taken on board feedback from somebody that's not particularly helpful? I'm sure you have. Enjoy the exercise. It could change your life. Put down this book for a few minutes and think about the bad experience that made you decide that public speaking wasn't for you. Recall how you felt on that day, on that stage, in front of those people. After a few minutes, spent remembering as much as you can about that occasion, switch your focus to the moment when you decided that everything had gone irreversibly wrong. Note how you felt at that time, how you felt about that moment ever since, how you've described that moment to people who weren't there, and how you feel about it now. Don't think about what ifs, or about where to put the blame. Just observe your own thoughts and feelings. Now write a list of adjectives that describe those thoughts, feelings and emotions. The list can be as long as you like. When you've finished making your list, consider each word that you've written and ask yourself, are these really words that people who admire me and look to me for knowledge and inspiration would choose to describe me? Delete any words that they wouldn't use to describe you. You won't be needing those anymore. Of the words that remain, ask yourself, do I need to believe this about myself? And what will my life be like if I dismiss these words as easily as I dismiss the others? While these words may represent feelings or emotions that felt very real at the time, what happens if you choose to believe that they're neither useful nor relevant to you now? Can you delete all the words on your list? If any remain, do you know why you're choosing to believe them? For more information or to book a coaching session, please visit my website, publicspeakingmojo.co.uk and you can order my book from Amazon or request it at your local bookshop.